Hey there, fellows. The time has come for us to take this here V-16 engine and slap it into this here Lottom. You'll recall that we experienced certain issues in terms of fine-tuning and uh, getting this engine to work. But I suggest we make some revisions, reconfigure a few things here and there, and then get to installing it. Once we're done, we're gonna take the V16-powered car and go for a nice drive in it. Let's do this. Now, last time you might recall that we had certain issues with the fuel system. So here's how we remedied that. We're revamping the entire system, connecting the feed and return lines, and setting up a pressurized fuel tank, like what you'd have on an actual chainsaw. Here's the shaft we fitted with some bearings, and that's going to be the throttle actuator. Here we have these strings, we're going to weld on some keys. They're going to pull the strings, and there you go, it should work all right. We need some air to breathe. Yes, we should off. Standing here was super scary. Why were you scared? I just was. You would have noticed that the motors are all in sync. Yeah, last time it was not behaving well at all. All of the engines are revving. Also, nothing is wobbling anymore. It all works great. They got up to speed. First of all, this time we're running a proper fuel system. Also, the throttle linkage. Let's fire it up again. Now, getting this engine installed is going to require us doing some work to prep the car. And the main issue on that front should be fairly obvious. You'll see that we've got a lot of motor, I've got a tape measure, so let's measure it. And the length of a standard engine for a lot is 470 millimeters. Meanwhile, the new engine is a good 1300 mil. And to be able to keep the gearbox in the same position, the front part of the engine will have to be about here. It's going to be sticking out by about half a meter. And I do think we're going to have to do some cutting. Let's go! We're going to cut the entire front end of the car off with the frame rails. And then, to make it look somewhat like a car, we'll proportionally elongate the front fenders, and that'll make for a lot of with an extra long front end. Okay, we removed the fenders, hacked all of this up. Yeah, we removed the entire front end of the car. Moved it away um, from the firewall by 1400 mil to provide a bit of wiggle room. And uh, this is what we are looking at. So after we extended the front end of the car to fit the engine, We've welded in some sections of metal to ensure proper rigidity. We also had to elongate the brake lines, as well as the steering shaft. We fitted an extra shaft and a couple of unis.
Okay, guys, so what we have here is some sort of a weird, uh, long thing. Tell us in the comments what sort of name we should give it. And if you want to see what the future holds in store for it, make sure to subscribe to our channel. So initially, we paired this engine to a manual gearbox, right? But while trying to fit the whole thing, we realized that the box would have to be slightly tilted. But hey, no big deal, that's not going to be much of an issue for us. The idea behind that is convenience of installation of the starter motor. And as not to hide this glorious creation, we decided not to even make a hood. So that you'd clearly be able to see that we're packing something really serious in here. And since everything is done, now comes the time to commence the testing. So let's go ahead and do just that. Okay, now I suggest we try, well, not try, but actually uh, start it. Okay, here goes nothing. That is one hell of a rev count. This is pretty neat, let me tell you. But to be honest, I'm starting to get a bit scared. But the way it revs, it's reminiscent of an actual engine. This is amazing. Okay, well, uh, shall we try... Uh... That was me. Well, let's try starting it again. Oh, there we go. It drives. The thing drives, people. Everything's good. Yeah, just switch it off with the transmission and gear. Yeah, enough smoking up the garage. These are two-stroke engines that burn oil. That's a lot of smoke. But let's take this outside and see how this thing does out on the road. Okay, so what do we got in the engine bay? A 16-cylinder engine. Each of these motors constitutes one cylinder, um, with a displacement of 58 cc each. And also, each of these motors is good for 4.5 horsepower. The math isn't complicated. We are looking at a total power output of 72 horsepower. As for the overall displacement of our makeshift V16 engine, 928 cc. 930 for a good measure. Okay, let's see how the thing accelerates. Now we are going to go ahead and start the engine. It is running, and here we go! Yeah, there we go. There we are. I'm off! We are moving. That's third gear. Holy cow. I see this is an absolute win. Honestly, guys, I mean, just look at this. It's all good. The motors have warmed up. And I'm making good progress. That is very good indeed. So how'd it go? Got up to third gear quite happily. How was the acceleration? I mean, in first gear you do get the sensation that there might be a slight, um... I don't know, lack of torque, I guess. But then I remembered how I'd use an actual chainsaw. Gave it a bit more gas, eased off the clutch, and off we go. After that, in second and third gear, the going was fairly easy. Just chop right away, uh-huh, yeah. I suggest we do a bit of testing, measure the acceleration time. We might not get up to 100, but we should at least time the acceleration from 0 to 60 kilometers an hour.
Ok guys, the world's very first V16 powered extended LATAM. And our very first instrument testing session. Are we ready? Here we go! This thing rips! There we go! Come on now, come on! And the results are in. And the results are actually... Pretty decent. That was sketchy. Properly terrifying. Yeah, that was just awesome. Despite me burning my finger when trying to start it, this uh, V16 engine with its 72 horsepower, its 928 cubic centimeters of displacement, it pulls. Yes, it did feel a bit weak in fifth, but I think that's very much forgivable. Still, it was able to get up to 60 kilometers an hour in uh, 26 seconds. That being said, this engine does have its drawbacks. First of all, it is clearly lacking in the torque department, as the chainsaws do not have any flywheels that could have helped them with that. Yes, we do have one for a car on there, but it's a stock one for a lot and not tailored to this application. Still though, these are some terrific results. The world's first extended Lada with a V16 engine, 26 seconds to 60Ks. It's the first example, so it's essentially a prototype. But we were able to make this work. That's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and catch you guys later.